God said to him one day, you know, you've been here about a year now. You think you bought bread to give us a word. So she said, what? I <laughs> said, so you heard. Are you ready to give us a word? So tonight, we are blessed and we are honored to have Stephanie come. And as she comes, uh, I know oftentimes when you have not been up You have a little bit of nerve thing. So let's just give her a welcome and help her to know that we love her and we're waiting to hear what God has to say to her. So let's welcome her with our body. Amen. 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 Are you nuts on these people here? What do you mean who touched you? There's too many people here. 
And she said, I did. She didn't have to. That took a lot of courage. Not only did she have to step completely out of her normal, she had to admit that I stepped out of my normal. Then you have this other gentleman, Jay Iris. He is a religious leader. According to the law, everything in his life is right. And when we do everything right in our life, we become very pious. Oh yes, I'm fine. I've done everything right. Kind of like that older brother in the prodigal son story. But he comes to Jesus because he has an issue. His child is sick. And he's done many things, I'm sure. You know, as, as a parent, when my babies are sick, I'm going to jump through hoops to fix my babies. And he brings Jesus to his home. The mourners are there. He's been told his daughter is dead. Jesus says, she's not dead. She's only a son. His decision point. When everybody laughs at him, he could have said, that's okay, Jesus, she's dead. But he doesn't. He goes against the norm at that point. Two awesome people who, according to their surroundings, are exactly where they're supposed to be. But according to their surroundings, their surroundings is what's wrong, not who they are. They step outside of what the world tells them is normal and step into what Jesus is showing them that is right to be the correct thing to do. That's what we need to do as people. A couple of other things I want, when I was studying this, and I was getting so many, so many scriptures on this, Oh, there was another parent. Ah, the boy, the demon-possessed boy. And what I loved about this story is Jesus asked the father, how long has this been going on? <laughs> you know? And the father said, since he was a little boy, nothing I can do about it. He falls out and has a fit of the drunk of man. I can't control it. I have no clue. The disciples were like, well, why couldn't we get it out of him? And Jesus, of course, was told the disciple he had more faith. And the boy's father, and I swear this is my favorite scripture, you ask me and I'll tell it to you a billion times. The father says, I do believe. Help thou unbelief. To me, that is an awesome, awesome thing because we all have areas in our life where we have unbelief. We have been taught so many things through our lives as to how we need to handle the world. Our, our religious teaching, we've been taught so many things. And we, we believe. We believe. But there are areas where we've been taught incorrectly or wrong. And those are the areas where we need to say, Jesus, help me with this. You know, help me, help me with this. I've done this, I've done it. There's something not quite right with this picture and I can't put my finger on it. Help me. One of the most courageous women that I've read about in the Bible is the woman with the alabaster box. The word tells us that she was a sinner. There's been a lot of assumptions about the sins that she's committed. I don't go into those assumptions. The word just simply says she was a sinner. And she comes in with this beautiful alabaster box full of perfumed oil. And she begins to wash and anoint Jesus. Tears and all. And her religious community around her, she's a sinner. Doesn't Jesus know what we can do with that money? We could have taken all that, taken that money, or sold that oil, or taken that money, and we could have fed the poor, and we could do all these great things with these, this money. This woman has given her all to our Savior, and everybody finds all these other things to do with it. And Jesus says, uh -uh. Don't you know what she's doing? She is preparing me for burial. And when this story is told, from time on, this woman will be remembered. Isn't that awesome? 
that we can go outside the norm and bring everything that we have to our Father, which are in heaven. And our name will be written in that book. And who knows? They may talk about you forever. <laughs> we never know. We never know what little acts that we do in our lives. God's going to use for greatness. If we step outside of what we believe is normal and we have something different, it not have to be great. I'm sure this woman did not think if I bring this little jar of oil and go in and anoint this man's feet and wash his feet with my tears, she didn't think that I'd be talking about her 3,000 years later. Had no clue. No clue. She just did what she felt was right. And she was blessed for it. And that's the way that we have to look in terms of our lives. I heard a gentleman say, and I used to hear all the time, do the next right indicated thing. And a gentleman said, I don't have to do the next right indicated thing. I have to do the next indicated thing right. That was oh so powerful to me. Okay? I have a choice in everything that I do. Am I going to do it as Jesus has instructed me to do it? Or am I going to do it the way that I have been consistently taught? I have to take a look at myself and every single day, sometimes every second of the day, is this going to be personal or is this going to be like Stephanie? Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> if those of you who knew me before knew what Stephanie was like, it would have been a really big mess of making Christ-like decisions really has changed, changed the way that I think at the time. Ah. Now one last picture that I really want to leave you with is, it's in Romans, Romans 8 and 19. It says, for all creation is waiting eagerly for that day when God will reveal who his children really are. Mm. To me, that's powerful. Many of us can confess and claim to be Christ's Lord. And we are one day when we come into this community, we're one way at home, we're one way as his friends. Are we showing are we really Christ's children? Thank you.